Hi everyone, I'm Ying Sun Jia. Today I would like to share with you about configure Azure AD for Azure Workload and subscriptions. I am Ying Sun Jia, Microsoft MVP. Here with my blog URL about AI and Azure security in IaaS and PaaS. In my opinion, cyber security, not just network security, is also include app security and cloud security. From my previous video, I get some feedback from my friends. They mentioned that uh, the first thing, talk too fast, not very clear, does not understand what I had talking about it, and also don't know more. I had included exercise in the video because I need you to have a, have a hands-on experience in the Azure security implement, implementation, not just listen I talk only. Today I will speak slowly. If not very clear, please let me know. You can comment at the video, the video below. Okay, let's get started with Configure Azure AD for Azure Workload and Subscription. This is today's agenda about MFA. Then about and also about Azure uh, user and group and install and configure Azure AD Connect, manage Azure AD, configure authentication method and manage app registration. Okay, let's get start. Multi factor for time bound evaluation. Using MFA increase identity security by limiting the impact of credential exposure to fully authenticate an attacker who has a user password will also need to have possession of their phone or their fingerprint. For example, authentication with only a single factor is insufficient and without MFA an attacker would be unable to use those credentials to authenticate. MFA should be enabled whenever possible as MFA has enormous benefit to security. Azure multi-factor on, on, on authentication is Microsoft's two-step verification solution. Azure MFA help safeguard access to data and applications while meeting user demand for a simple sign-in process. It delivers strong authentication via a range of verification methods, include phone, call, text messages, or mobile app verification. MSA also the provider of the request service to validate that the user really is a real person, not a bot, and they have the device with them, and that they could provide any additional information that we might need from the from that environment. Here, what happened when someone tried to connect to a resources? The security enhanced by Azure MFA and the service in on premise. Here was the first exercise about configure MFA for application. You can do it for around five minutes. Okay, this was a second exercise about configure Azure MFA for password. Okay, 
Let's come to the understand user and groups. In Azure AD, all users who require access to resources must have a user account. A user account is a Sync AD DS object or an Azure AD user object that contains all the information that require to authenticate and authorize the user during the sign-in process and build the user tokens. To view the Azure AD users, simply access the All User Blade. Take a minute to access the portal and view your user. Notice the user type and member column. A group help organizer help organize user to make it easier to manage permission. Group can be easily added through the portal. There are two types of group, security group and distribution group. You can also use PowerShell to add group with the new Azure AD group command. There are two ways to add member to user group, to Azure user group, directly assign or dynamically assign. Azure AD Connect will integrate your on-premise directory with Azure Active Directory. This allows you to provide a common identity for your user for all three files, Azure and SAS software as a service. Application integrate with Azure AD in a hybrid identity environment. Microsoft Azure Active Directory Connect can be downloaded for free. Integrating your on-premise directory with Azure AD make your user more productive by providing a common identity for accessing both cloud and on-premise resources. Okay, now come to the Manage Azure AD Directory role. Azure AD provides many built-in roles to the team to cover the most common security scenario. To understand how the roles work, you will examine three roles that apply to all resources type. Owner, which has full access to all resources include including the right to delegate access to others. Contributor, which can curate and manage all types of Azure resources but can grant access to others. Reader, which can view existing Azure resources. This module previously discussed now we come to the configure authentication methods. This module previously discussed a Azure MFA and self service password reset SSPR in Azure AD. This service might require additional information to confirm your identity. This additional information is called authentication method. We recommend that administrator enable user to able to select more than the minimum number of required authentication methods in case that do not have access to certain one. The following table lists the auto authentication method and the service that use them. Okay, now come for come to the third exercise configure authentication method. Ah, oh, sorry, it's not an exercise. Now we come to the continue from a previous slide. Azure authentication method. Password. This is the only method that can disable. Security question. This method is available only for non-administrative account that use SSPR. Azure store security question privately and in security enhanced manner on a user object in the directory. Only user can answer the question 
and only during registration and administrator can read or change a user question or answer. Azure provides 35 predefined questions or translator and localized based on the browser's broker. You can customize the question by using the administrative interface. However, Azure display them in the language that enter. The maximum length is 200 characters. Email address. This method available only in SSPR. We recommend a wide use uh, avoid the use of an email account that does not require user ID password to access it. Microsoft Authentication Authenticator app. This, this app available in Android and iOS. The Microsoft Authenticator app helps to prevent unauthorized access to account and helps stop fraudulent transaction by pushing a notification to your smartphone or tablet. User view the notification and if it's legitimate, select verify, otherwise they select deny. User can use Microsoft Authenticator app or a third party app as software token to generate authentication uh, verification code. After entering the user name and password, the user enter the code provided by the app on the sign-in screen. The verification code provides a second form of authentication. OAuth hardware token, OAuth 14, is an open standard that specifies how to generate one-time password code. Azure AD supports the use of OAuth top SHA1 tokens of the 30 second or 60 second variety. Customer can get this token from the vendor their choice. Note that secret key are limited to 128 creators, which might not be compatible with all token. Mobile phone, two option available, text message or phone call, app password. Certain non browsers app does not support Azure MFA. If user are enable for Azure MFA and try to use non-browser app, they will be unable to authenticate. The app password allows the user to contribute to authenticate. Now come to Manage App Registration. Microsoft Identity Platform is an evolution of Azure AD Identity service and developer platform. It allows developer to build application that sign in all Microsoft identity, a token called Microsoft Graph, others Microsoft API or API that developer built. It's a full features platform that consists of authentication services, open source library, application registration and configuration, full developer documentation code sample and other developer content. The Microsoft Identity Platform support industry standard protocol such as OA, OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Corner. Any application that outsource authentication to Azure AD must be registered in a directory. This step involves telling Azure AD about your application. Include the URL where it's located. The URL to send reply after authentication, the URI to identify your application, and more. Azure AD represents application following a specific model that's designed to fulfill two main features, two functions. The first one, identify the app according to the authentication protocol is support. This involves enumerating all the identifier URL secret and related information that are needed at authentication time. Here, here we are, Azure AD, hold all the data required to support authentication at runtime. Hold all the data for deciding what resources an app might need to access and 
whether a given request should be fulfilled and under what circumstances. Provide the infrastructure for implementing app provisioning within the app, developers, tenants, and to any other AD tenant. The second one, handle user concern during token request time and facilitate the dynamic provisioning of app across N. Here we ensure AD enable user and administrator to dynamically run or deny concern for the app to access resources on their behalf. The last one, the second one is enable administrator to ultimately decide what app, what app are allowed to do and which user can use specific app and how the directory resources are accessed. That's all for today. Here will be my Twitter and my blog about this video. I will try to deliver two videos in one month because I need some time to prepare the slide and include the article. If you got any feedback, please let me know or any topic you want to know about it, you can connect, comment at the video below. Thank you very much.